Well, hello. Here we are looking at an InDesign document with a footnote. The intention is to turn this into a fixed layout ebook, but we want to actually have the footnotes rather than displaying on the screen like this or on the page. We want to make them into pop up notes. Now, this is something that you can't do um, by default by exporting to the fixed layout ebook. You can only do that with the reflurable ebook, but what we have to do is to find a way of, uh, of producing this ourselves. Now, there are a number of different techniques, but I'm just going to show you one very simple way of doing this. So the first thing we have to do is to use a script to convert the footnotes into endnotes. Um, so we go to our scripts panel, and this script that I'm going to use here is something that you can download. Um, I will make a link to it. It comes from a wonderful guy called Peter Carell, who has uh, produced lots of scripts for InDesign. So we just double click on this, and the the footnotes uh, have now gone, uh, and we now have endnotes. So I'm just going to go to the very end of the document. And you can see down here on the left hand side uh, on this page here, we've got the footnotes. Now, what I need to do is to leave these on for the moment. We can remove them at the end of this process, but I'm going to copy that text from note number one and now go back to um, the place that we left, which I believe is right here. No, I beg your pardon, it's right here. So we can see down at the bottom left hand side, um, you get the very small number one. Uh, we want What we actually want to do is we want to put a text box somewhere here which will pop up when we click over that number one or somewhere near that number one. I'm just gonna create a text box here and paste that text into there. Certain attributes that we want to set for this, uh, for example, if we now make an object style for this so that we can, of course, repeat it for the next uh, footnotes that we do later on. So I'm just going to call this my, my pop-up. And uh, we want this to be solid white um, so that when it goes over the top of the text, uh, it will then, of course, be uh, cover over the text. And we also might possibly potentially want to add a, uh, a line around this. So I'm now going to adjust the stroke to be only 0.5 of a point. OK, so now when that is over the top of the text, it's going to look a little bit like that. Uh, what I also now need to do, just this is make for my convenience really, is to put that onto a different layer. Um, so here we have our layers, and I'm going to create a new layer, uh, and I'm going to just c cut that out of there and go to my new layer and actually paste that in place. So it's exactly in the same place. So you can see that's on a different layer, making it easy for me to, uh, to show it and hide it. Uh, let's just make sure that our object style is now set um, to be redefined as that. Right, OK, so now what we want to do is to make this into a button. So this is going to be a simple button like this. Um, it's called button one. Uh, we want to make sure that this is hidden until it's triggered like this. Uh, we also want to make sure that we're going to uh, be able to click over it and make it hide itself. So we do that by uh, clicking here and saying show hide buttons and forms. Choose that button, which of course we've called button one and put the line through the eye. You see I've just clicked there until I see visibility like this. This means that this will now hide itself when I click over it. Right, okay, so the next thing is we what we need to do now is to cr create a button uh, somewhere uh, which will then reveal that uh, text box. And we do that, first of all, we've got to go back onto our other layer so this is the the, the normal layer um, and what we actually wanted to try to do is to put something around about this point here now um, the, there are various options for this but what I would normally do is to suggest that we put something in the margin um, and then make sure that it refers to this piece of text here alongside this piece of text. I mean, obviously there are a number of options. I wouldn't suggest that you uh, make the number one interactive because it's so small that when we put this onto a mobile device, it's impossible for somebody to click with their finger or, to, or to, to touch it with their finger. So what we have to do now is to place a, an object on the screen and turn that into a button. 
So I'm going to now just uh, place um, a small object that I've created and then uh, resize it. Uh, now obviously this could be a different type of icon. Um, but we want to um, position this uh, somewhere around here. Now just um, we need to make sure that this is an anchored object um, because otherwise um, if we do make some changes to the text at some stage um, then obviously um, these things are going to move and that, that object needs to be anchored to the place in the text. So I'm going to anchor this to that actual number and that anchoring um, is quite important because you want to make sure that it's um, it's set um, to be customized so that we can place it anywhere that we like like this and I'm just going to now position this over here so it's relative to that object now in theory as we move things around on the screen if any changes occur to styling before this then that will that will obviously move so where this goes is entirely up to you you might want to make sure that you're consistent now I do advise you to keep it away from the outer edges of the ebook that is to the left and the right of what we see on the screen at the moment because that might interfere with the um, with the with the interaction of the uh, the normal in iBooks. Um, however, if you wanted to put it somewhere on this side, then just make sure you keep it near to the text box, not too near the edge. So that would also be an option if you want to consistently keep things uh, into the onto the outer uh, parts of the uh, margin like this. Okay, so now this now needs to be a button. So I'm going to turn that into a button. Uh, and that button now needs to be created so that it will now, the action will be to show button one. So we now reveal that with the visibility with the eye. Okay, now what we can do then is to just to test this out using the preview with uh, the iBooks preview. I should say the EPUB 3 preview just enlarge that up a little bit and as you can see there's nothing on the screen uh, there's nothing actually in this preview to show the the box uh, the text box but when I click here it will be revealed and when I click over the top of it it will disappear now you'll notice um, that, that nothing happens when I click over anywhere outside of the box and this in a sense is not the default behavior that you may see uh, in apps um, or even in Windows, uh, or, or, you know, using apps on a computer, because you're, what you're actually going to see is that normally is that we click anywhere and that will uh, that pop up will disappear. So we want to try to uh, make that happen for us. So we've got another job to do now. And first of all, I'm going to actually bring this up onto the screen so it's a little bit more um, near to where the uh, the actual. Um, references so we'll, we'll, we'll put it up there now what we want to do is to make sure that anywhere that we click on the screen will also hide this object so what we can do uh, is now we'll again we'll use our layers so I'm going to move on to this layer um, and this layer here on this layer here I'm going to make sure uh, that I draw a box over everything. Okay, now this box needs to have a color. A fill color like this and we'll go into our swatches and find a gray, that's that will be suitable. Um, and also with our effects window we want to make that transparent. Bring that onto the screen so that you can see what's happening here. Okay, so we're going to do something like that. Now also bear in mind that in terms of the layers, this needs to be in the correct position below that text box like this. 
Now this also needs to be a button because what we're actually planning to do is to show that I'm going to name this grey box so that we know what it is. Um, and when we click this object, it's going to hide button one, which is the text box, and it's also going to hide itself like this. It's also going to, no, well, that, 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 that's, that's fine. That should do for the moment. We've got other details that we can deal with in a second. Um, we now need to uh, hide this layer temporarily and go back to this button. And with this button, we need to make one small edit to this. We need this button not only to um, make the visibility of the text box, um, we also need to make the visibility of the grey box. Um, we, miss, we must make sure that with this button, this button uh, will also be hidden until triggered so that it's not going to actually show. Okay, now let's see if this actually works. Right, click this. Up pops the text, covering everything else in grey. Uh, we can, of course, click the text object and it will disappear. But we also need to be able to make sure that it makes the uh, the outer, the outside disappear as well. So that's one little adjustment that we need to make. So what we need to do is to make sure that this button also hides the grey box. So let's just try that one more time. Make this much, much bigger for you so that you can see it working. Okay, there we have the button. We can click anywhere on the screen now for that to disappear. Now all we need to do is to repeat that process for all of the other footnotes in the document.